Today I will be covering all the different upgrades that you can get in Starscape. Upgrades are almost essential to all aspects of the game. They can make whatever you're doing easier, or, making you mu or make you much more powerful. Most have five different tiers with varying stats, but a few of these are different. There are different, up there are different upgrades for different sizes of ships. Firstly, I will demonstrate the upgrades for smaller ships such as fighters, interceptors, and less powerful mining and hauling ships. The first upgrade is called the Afterburner. When you hold the button for the Afterburner, it essentially makes your ship a lot faster until you let go of the button or it runs out. Once it runs out, you wait for about 20 to 10 to 20 seconds for it to recharge. The Afterburner is best used for battles between fighters, as the high speed boost can really help against other players' fighters. You don't need to only use the Afterburner for battle though. It can be very helpful and save a lot of time if you just need to get to a station or something similar. Next is the Signal Cloak. cloak. Uh, the Signal Cloak is passive, meaning it will always be on and you don't need to turn it on. It will greatly decre decrease your signal, uh, meaning it makes pirates and other players very hard to find you. This is a useful update for my this is a useful upgrade for miners and haulers since it will help protect against pirates. Speaking of pirates, the warp disruptor is an essential upgrade. When close to another player in an insecure or wild system, you open up a menu showing the list of players with a few thousand meters in your range. And if you get close enough to them, you can disrupt their ability to warp away, making this a deadly weapon against defenseless miners and haulers. The only way to escape the disruptor is to go out of range of it, but generally pirate ships are very fast. Since smaller mining ships cannot have turrets, they need the tractor beam upgrade to collect ore. It is very similar to the turret version, but it will follow wherever you look. Lastly for smaller ships, there is the light burner. The light burner allows you to instantly travel 3000 meters in the direction you're facing. There is a big cooldown though. It is very useful to escape bad situations or to gain the upper hand in combat. Like maybe if you have a long range weapon like the beam and your opponent has a shorter range weapon like the um, cannons. All of the ones I've mentioned so, so far you can buy at space station markets, with the exception of the light burner. The light burner is a reward that you get from doing missions for the syndicate. However, however, you can buy it from a player market for a few thousand credits, which is a lot easier than doing a bunch of missions for the syndicate. Also, instead of having five tiers, there are only two, the first one being the one I just explained to you, and the second you find in ancient structures, which I'll do a video covering how to find them in the future. Moving on to the upgrades for larger ships now. The first one is called the Afterburner W, and it's exactly the same as the Afterburner I mentioned before, but just more expensive. This goes the same for the Lightburner, which is now called the Lightburner W. Again similar to the smaller ship upgrades is the Multi-Disruptor. Multi this is a version of the Warp Disruptor that can actually disrupt two ships at a time, which can be very deadly to a group of mi uh, people mining or hauling. The rest are new concepts, starting with the Servo Surge. The Servo Surge, the servo surge will dramatically increase the turning speed of your turrets for a short amount of time. I personally think this is one of the worst upgrades, and I would only recommend using it if you know that you're going to be fighting speedy fighters. When activated, the Overclocker highly speeds up the firing rate of turrets for 20 seconds. This can deal a lot of extra damage, but it stops the shield from regenerating. Overall it's decent for BBB, but not the best in my opinion. Next is the Armor bo Booster. Each ship comes with a different amount of armor points that help negate damage. The amount of armor points don't actually add to the health of your ship, but they just make it take less damage. If you've played Minecraft or Terraria, they have similar systems. When you activate the armor booster, it will add a lot more armor points, making you take le making you take less damage. To help protect your ship, however, I would best recommend the next and final two upgrades, the hull and shield boost. Both of both of these have about two minutes of cooldown, um, and will heal the hull slash shield quite a lot. I think that these upgrades are the best possible upgrade for both PvP and PvP. Hull booster excels in PvE, which is fighting against drones and NPC pirates. Often it is done in wild space PvP. Often PvE is done in deep in wild space, where there are no space stations anywhere close to you. Hull booster means that wherever you, when, whenever you are close to dying, you can warp out to a safe spot where you can heal and come back to finish your battle. However, for PvP situations between warships, shield booster is better. It heals for the same amount of health that the hull booster does, but cool guns are becoming one of the most popular tur turrets in the game, and they do devastating damage to the hull. But they are relatively weak against shields. So if you heal your shield whenever you can, the cool gun will do a lot less damage and you'll have a major advantage. That is it for this video. I hope this helped you in finding the best upgrade for your gameplay style. I'll be doing more guides like this in the future, so consider subscribing so you don't miss out on them. Thanks for watching.